The Winged Cat, A Tale of Ancient Egypt, Deborah Norse Lattimore, Harper Collins Publishers. You want to look at this border before we move on because it's very much like what we'll be doing. In Egypt, most ancient, there lived a serving girl named Merit who worked in the temple of the cat goddess Basteth. When she swept the halls in the heat of day, her friend Bast, a small cat, kept her company. At night, when Merit's work was done, they strolled out to sleep in cool comfort on the sandy banks of the Nile. On just such a night, across the moonlit sky, the god Thoth sailed to the netherworld, his home. Silently, he traveled the starry stream. Something fell from his neck far down and landed between the sleeping girl and the cat. Again, please look at the borders. The next morning, Waha, Pharaoh's high priestess, spotted it. It was a gold amulet shaped like a heart, and there was nothing Waha loved more than gold. He carefully stepped over the sleeping girl and picked it up. Merida awoke, but kept her eyes shut because she recognized the voice of the powerful high priest. His bad temper was widely known. This is very royal indeed, Merritt heard him say. Should I take it to Pharaoh or should I keep it? As he turned to go, Waha tripped over Bast the cat and the golden heart flew into the river. You, you rat chasing lump of fur, shouted Waha angrily. He seized Bast and flung her downstream. Merritt jumped up and rushed into the current to save Bast, but it was too late. The cat was lifeless in her arms. Pharaoh will judge you harshly for this, cried Merritt. This poor cat belonged to the temple of the goddess Bastet. Go to Pharaoh, worm of a guard, retorted Waha. See for yourself if a stupid cat matters at all. Merritt told Pharaoh what had happened, and the high priest soon found himself called to the foot of the throne. A sacred cat was drowned, said Pharaoh. Merritt says you did it. You swear you did not. I cannot decide who is telling the truth. You have only to look into my heart to see that I am telling the truth, Waha said. Your words inspire my command, said Pharaoh. Hear me. You must each take the magic spells from the Book of the Dead and travel to the netherworld. When you arrive in the Hall of Judgment, the gods will decide who is telling the truth. If your heart weighs the same as Ma'at, the feather of truth, you will have nothing to fear. But if your heart weighs more, it will be proof that you are lying and the monster Amit will devour you. Go and prepare. Now, even though Waha was the high priest, he did not own the necessary spells because he had sold them for gold. So he scribbled the few spells he remembered onto wooden figures called Ushabtis. If the spells were right ones, he could use them to open the 12 gates of the netherworld. If the spells were wrong, he could always throw an Ushtabdi to a hungry demon and still be safe. Merit returned to the temple of Bastet. She took the limp body of Bast, wrapped it in fine linen, and laid food and drink before it. Farewell, dear Bast, Merit said sadly. Waha will find his way, and I, without any spells, will be lost, and the monsters will eat me. I will not say farewell, said Bast. What? exclaimed Merit. You can speak? My ba soul speaks, answered Bast. I was living my fourth life when that fool of a high priest tripped over me and tossed me into the river. Now I must travel to the netherworld to get my next life. Since you were kind enough to give me such a fine funeral, I will go with you. But I am too poor to buy spells from the Book of the Dead, said Merit. How will we find the way? The Book of the Dead is much more than just a handful of spells, purred Bast. Spells are words. If you can read, we will find our way, remember. Unless you keep your eyes ahead of you and read it, all will be lost. 
That evening, the sun blazed its path beyond the western horizon. Waha stood on the shore. Merritt, with the invisible soul of Bast the cat on her shoulder, stood beside him. A gleaming boat appeared. On its deck stood the sun god, Horus, surrounded by the rays of the setting sun. Look carefully, whispered Bast. See the words? Read them and the boat will take us to the 12 gates of the netherworld. Merritt saw hidden words appear, and she read them aloud. The mooring pin is like two ladies. They are Upper and Lower Egypt, she began. The sails are bigger than heaven. That is the goddess Newt. The oars are the hawk's fingers, and that is Horus. The breeze that holds up the sky is Shu. The ground is Geb, and the river is Happy the Nile. Come right on my boat, said Horace, beckoning to Merritt. Now it is the priest's turn. Waha searched frantically in his sack. He finally brought out one Ushabti and squinted at it. I've forgotten what it says, he muttered. Then feed the demon or be devoured, said Horace. Waha threw a Ushabti behind the boat to a demon who gobbled it up with terrible, gnashing teeth. Bast spread her wings around Merritt's head so she would not look. Waha looked and suddenly he remembered the heart amulet that had started the whole episode. He stared into the water, hoping to find it. The boat stopped at the first of the 12 gates. Waha fished with his fingers behind the stern. Merritt looked up. The great gate was staring at her. Name my parts and you may pass, it said. Merritt shook, hand to arm, knee to leg, as hungry monsters crowded around the boat, hoping she would make a mistake. She eyed the door carefully and pictures appeared. Merritt spoke. On the lintel is the great vulture who protects all Egypt. The side posts are legs and a cup, and on the door is a hand. The door opened a crack, and then it stopped and looked at Waha. The high priest dug around in his sack, but could not find what he needed. Quickly, he tossed another Ushabti behind the boat, and Merritt heard the crunching of the giant teeth. Waha leaned back and ran his fingers through the water in search of the amulet. One by one, Merritt called out the names of the great doors and one by one they opened. Waha made more and more mistakes and threw more and more of his Ushabtis to the demons. Finally, Waha became impatient. Why must I make this dangerous journey just to rid myself of a stupid worm girl, he thought. He leaned over in time to see the golden heart floating beside the boat. Quickly, he plucked it from the water and thrust it into his sack. Now he had all that he wanted. All he had to do was rid himself of merit and go home. The sunboat stopped at the entrance to the Hall of Judgment. On either side were swirl. The sunboat stopped at the entrance to the Hall of Judgment. On either side were swirling pits of fire. Just as Merritt stepped out of the boat, Waha shoved her into the flames. Oh, no, Bast, help me, Merritt cried. Stop, think, said Bast, spreading her wings around Merritt's head. Read. Through the flames, Merritt could see on the doorway above her the words of the last spell. May this magic fire burn me if I am not good in my heart. As she spoke the words, the fires parted. Merritt was saved. Approach, called a voice from the end of the hall. It was Anubis, the jackal-headed god of the dead. He stood beside the giant scales of truth. Thoth stood on the other side, ready to record the results with ink, reed, and papyrus. Amit crouched at the base of the scales, grinding his teeth behind them all, staring in disbelief, was Waha. We know why you have come, said Anubis. Since Merritt passed the test of fire, she's now free. And Bast, let your ba soul and heart be weighed against the feather of truth 
and you may gain another life. Bast flew to the scales. Since it was a soul and heart with cat wings, it was lighter than a feather. The scale tipped. By best, laughed Waha. That's nothing. Why, I have something here much better than that. Waha produced the golden heart amulet and gave it to Anubis to put on the scales. The heart in its shining beauty sank to the ground like the metal that it was. Guilty, said Thoth. Furthermore, I have been looking for this. Thoth picked up the heart and returned it to his neck, and before anyone could say, by Bess, twice, Ahmed had chewed and swallowed all of Waha, right down to his last Ushabti. As for Bast and Merit, they were taken on Horus's golden boat to the river banks of the Nile. When Pharaoh saw them, he knew at once whose hearts were good as gold. He rewarded Merit with a life of ease and plenty. Bast even lived for more. We're going to be learning about ancient Egyptian art and ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. This was the writing of that period over 3,000 years ago. This shape is called a cartouche, and it was discovered that anything within a cartouche shape is a person's name. And that's just like in our English language when we capitalize a name. My name is Sue, but that's also a word you could go to court and sue somebody. The way you know that this says the name Sue is because it's contained within a cartouche, so you would recognize that. In Egyptian art, they really love to use profiles and use them almost exclusively, but often the bodies are facing front and the feet and the face face to the side. We're going to be doing our hieroglyphics first, and we're going to be using authentic Egyptian papyrus. Papyrus is the name of a plant that grows on the banks of the Nile in Egypt. The paper is very lovely, the edges are rough, and a lot of people think that we should cut them straight, but I think they're beautiful. First, we're going to cut out the cartouche shape. This is regular drawing paper with a small piece of papyrus pasted inside. You can trace the cartouche shape, or if you prefer, you can draw it freehand. I have a smaller one too, if you would like to have a smaller one on the paper. Also, you wanna think about how many letters you're gonna be using because you certainly want to center, leaving enough space on the top and the bottom. This is centered beautifully. Of course, in the word S-U-E, the U is in the middle. So you really do want to locate the middle. And I've made this little chart for you to help you. This is the middle of this one, and this is the vertical center. This is some letters of the alphabet that correspond to Egyptian hieroglyphics. There are hundreds of hieroglyphics, so this translation is just directly related to the English language. There are 26 hieroglyphics. There are a few where I've written the word or here. You have a choice when you see the word or. You can use either this one or this one to make an H sound. So look at this. Choose the letters of your name that you want to copy over onto the papyrus. Put them within the cartouche. When that's finished, we're going to be doing in lightly in pencil, Egyptian style borders. And I'll be giving you lots of reference material. And then we'll be creating Egyptian style art using people in profile. If you do it very lightly in pencil, you can go over it in black Sharpie marker with a good sharp point, uh, or you can draw directly in Sharpie, which takes a lot less time.